name is David Finney. I'm a Big Fix Technical Advisor based out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, today I'm going to go over how to swap your self-signed certificate for your Big Fix remote control server. Uh, as always, if there's any questions, you'll see my contact information there on the first slide. And uh, let's dive in. About how I knew there was a problem. Um, so first things first, uh, remote control server right here. Uh, what I did is I went ahead and I started just you know an unattended session. And going into this, you'll see that we run into an issue. It's actually launching here on this left side. And here we go. I get this error message. Uh, honestly, when I first came across this error message, I didn't know that this uh, was not specifically pointing at the broker. Um, so it took a few steps to figure that out, but I'm going to show you that real quick. So a couple different ways you can figure this out. Um, so first off, obviously, you've got to OK that. It's going to kill that. Um, First thing, you'd always just actually click on the cert right here, and you could go over to the connection not secure, more information, and view certificate. So when I first came across that issue, like I said, I honestly thought it had to do with the broker. Um, it doesn't. It actually has to do with the root server, or not the root server, but the remote control server itself. So this expired uh, just a couple of days ago. And uh, you can check the same thing also on your certificate for your actual broker. Um, so I went and I navigated here, kind of did the exact same process. You can see this one's still good for a little bit. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this is one of the ways to go ahead and actually figure that out. I'm going to drag over another method. Um, so here's the system where I've actually got remote control uh, up and breathing. And this is where I'm going to ultimately go ahead and actually uh, show you how to do this. Um, to actually resolve this. But in any case, uh, one of the very first things I did is I enabled uh, debug tracing. Um, the way you do that, um, or actually we're going to do environmental variables. Okay. So I'm logged into this system right now using um, the local administrative account, and I went ahead and I set a TRC trace. There it is. So this right here, what it does is it tells the controller to do a debug tracing. Um, so you set that, you kick off your session, and you see what it spits back. So I set those and went into this log file and went straight to the bottom. And you'll see it is yelling at me about the, well, there's the error right there, right? Certificate expired. This is why it, it spit out the same error on this same system here. Uh, but you'll see the validity and what system it's against, right? So that's, that's the system we're on right now. So the... If, if you didn't, you know, think to go ahead and actually check the cert itself like I didn't, uh, this is a, another surefire way to, way to figure that out as well. Um, so, and actually about that uh, that particular trace, um, you'll actually see there's, there's some files that actually get created in this instance, and it's right underneath the user profile. Um, so that's where that's actually going to get created. So, um, little food, food for thought also on that. Um, when you do... Uh, any on-demand session, stuff like that, you're going to see temporary log files created underneath these same user profile directories as well. So just kind of a heads up there. It's pretty handy to know that. Uh, but in any case, we got got a little bit of work to do. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is go ahead and start uh, replacing that. So a couple different pieces here. Uh, first of which being, um, I'm going to actually make this a little bigger so it's a little bit easier to move around. Uh, first couple of things. We're going to need the IKEY man. Uh, which you're going to see that underneath this path, path here. Obviously, if your path is, um, you know, good chance it's going to be a little different because uh, I've just got this installed on our C drive. So it's just the installation directory for um, your actual remote control server itself. And uh, next to that, you also got this directory here. This is actually where the certs are existing now. Um, you'll see I, I did make a backup of this uh, prior to doing some of these example videos. Uh, you can see we got the k.jks. Uh, when you're using a, a self-signed certi certificate, as is placed by the remote control server, if you don't swap it out for CI cert or anything like that, this is your key. Um, so anyway, um, actually, you know, I see this old one here. So there's that same window on this system when I was testing this out. So I'm going to go and close that out now. And uh, so I just added the word old in there just to back it up, just for the sake of having a backup. Um, so anyway, let me go ahead and I'm actually going to close this and actually just reopen it from scratch. All right, so we're gonna open this and we're gonna go and open the JKS file, which we're gonna use this path up here. All right, so we're in JRE bin, so we need to get up to server. And then I believe we're looking for TRC server. Nope, WLP first, then USR. 
and servers, TRC server, resources, security, and there's our key. So we're going to open up the one that we think is expired or what we know is expired. And there it is. There is a default password. This is that default password. This is this is in docu this is in the documentation. So this isn't like I'm sharing you something you know wildly super secret here. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. And click OK. There it is. Right. So there's the default one. I'm going to view or edit, and it's going to yell at me again. Certificate is expired. Uh, reason why I'm going into it is we're actually going to remove it and create a new self signed cert within it. Uh, but one thing that I I got told, and I'm going to go ahead and put this on my clipboard. Uh, when you're creating these new certs, um, make sure you add the DNS name to them. Um, that'll make a lot of different uh, fights a little bit easier for you. Um, so I just wanted to kind of call that out real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and actually delete this. And that's gone. We're going to do a new self-signed cert. And there is the common name, right? And just as we were just talking about just a moment ago, put that in your DNS name as well. That'll save you a lot of trouble. Uh, key label, I'm just going to put this, uh, just, you know, I'm going to probably put 0926-2022 key. You know, since I just created a new one, I'll probably go ahead and do a SHA-256-2048. That all looks good. Validity period for the next year. Click OK. And there we go. Um, so it's in there now. I'm going to save that, and I'm going to run it over that same JKS file. OK. And, you know, just because this is a lab environment, I probably wouldn't do this in real world. I'm just going to put the same, you know, password in it. And we're going to replace it. Okay, so that should take care of that. Um, so that's saved. That should be done. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and validate that. And so you can actually see the security back here just took that modification. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close this, uh, this guy here. And the last step of this puzzle is just literally restarting the service. At least it should be. <laughs> um, there's our server right there. I'm going to go and restart this service. And let's, frankly, let's just see what we got. Um, close these old renders <coughs> for these certificates here. And I'm just going to go ahead and refresh this guy. Let's go in, and that's not the right one out anyway. I'm just going to use my standard admin profile. All right, we're back in. Um, I have that saved right now, and I'm just going to go ahead and click on this certificate. It's still going to be a self-signed certificate, so it's still going to yell at me somewhat. But the cert is updated, so that's a good sign. So let's uh, let's try to do something with it, eh? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start a unattended session again. Same thing that failed before, and see if it gets us. And it works. So it looks like we got a, uh, a fix on that one. It's not going to come back completely known yet. Um, that's because we are we just restarted that service, so no real surprise there. Um, so, but yeah, it is definitely going to work again. Uh, we'll perform one other real quick test here. Go ahead and do a, just a standard broker session. Nothing special there. Uh, stand out of an unattended session um, just to test it again yeah we're there we're cooking so just wanted to take a moment and create that video let everybody see how I was gonna go ahead and troubleshoot that all right well thank you for joining me today for this troubleshooting session if there's uh, any questions again do not hesitate to reach out and uh, thanks for watching